All right, this chapter, we're going to finish off the prototype. Uh, this is chapter eight, artificial intelligence and slingshots. So we have a lot of work to do for this chapter. We're going to start um, in File Explorer. We're going to be pulling in a bunch of new scripts and upgrading several scripts as well. And there's a couple of sprite sheets that we'll be importing as well. But let's start with the enemy. Um, we'll pull the enemy object. We'll pull it into the hierarchy just so we can more easily edit it. And we want to add, let me close these components. We're going to add a circle collider. And the circle collider will represent uh, the area around which the enemy will not attack. Um, I'm sorry, the circle will represent the area that the enemy will attack if the player enters it. So we'll start by saying add component. Look for circle collider 2D. <clears throat> okay, so now we have our circle collider 2D. I'm zooming in a bit on the enemy here. Okay, so you want to check off this trigger. You don't want any physics here. Um, and I'm going to change the radius for now to, to 1. You can see if I say edit collider. Uh, go back to our scene view. We can see the collider. And you'll notice if I change the radius, the collider gets bigger. We'll leave it at one for now. And I think it'll get larger as we tune the game. All right, and now let's bring in some of the scripts. Um, first one is a script called wander.cs. So I'm going to go to my file explorer. First, bring in wander.cs into scripts. So I'll drag it over into mono behaviors. And I just want to take a look at it in Visual Studio and make sure it's a mono behavior. Okay, it is a mono behavior, so we're going to go back to our game and this script gets attached to our enemy. So we click enemy, whoops. Click enemy and let's just drag the wander script over. And we'll leave it uninitialized for now. Because we need to do some changes to the enemy animation. So we already have an enemy walk animation. If I play, if I play the game, you can see that the default state should have him walking. It's not moving, but his animation is walking. Okay, so to configure this animation, we're gonna want to add a parameter, an animation parameter of type boolean called is walking. So I'm going to select in the animator pane with parameters selected. I'm going to add a boolean and I'm going to name this guy is walking. Okay, so that looks good. Next, we want to go into our animation window and select enemy idle. And we want to right mouse click and say make transition. And we're going to make the transition to the walking state, enemy walk. 
now selecting this transition. We want to add a condition from going to idle to walk. We want is walking is true. And we also want to click off as exit time. And let's expand settings. Click off fixed duration. Interruption source should be current state at next date. And we'll set these duration to zero. And the rest of that looks good. Now we want to create a transition from enemy walk to idle. So we got a bi-directional transition here. Select that transition from walk to idle. And we want to add condition. And this time is walking false is when we go from walking to idle. And then the other settings, click off, has exit time, click off fixed duration, set trim, just in duration to zero. And interruption source from current state to next state. And I think that is good. We'll save the game, control S. Uh, one thing I notice here is that the Entry goes to walk, it should go to idle. So let's see, can I delete that? Let's see, set state machine transition state there. Okay, so now it properly initializes to the idle state, and then it'll go between idle and walk, depending on that Boolean is walking, which will be controlled uh, through a script. Let's save the game. And one last thing, select the enemy object. And we want to apply. Actually, first let's configure the wander script. So while the enemy object is in the hierarchy, let's go to the wander script. We're going to initialize, start with pursuit speed at 1.4 meters per second, wander speed. 0 0.8, and we'll tune these later, like the direction change interval 3, and check off follow player. Okay, I'm going to save the changes, and then I'm going to apply these overrides. Apply all. going to delete the enemy object from the scene, save the game. All right, now I'm going to play the game, and the enemy should now, once he spawned, he should wander. There he is. Now he's just pushing the player once the player loses all his health. So you can see that the enemy is going to the scene. You can see that the enemy is wandering around and we can see his collider there. Okay, so that looks good. We'll stop the video there and continue on the next.